Hey there everyone, Ateish here and back again with another video in the Golang series. And again, before we move further, a big shout out to Pro.LearnCode Online, uh, all the users who have supported me there. Thank you so much. Uh, with your support, this series is possible. Now moving on, we have already inserted a data into the database. Now it's time that we do and we go ahead and perform an update operation on that. So update is really simple in the MongoDB. You first have to provide a filter based on which the data is going to be filtered out, like which one should I update. And the second part of the operation is you need to pass on a flag, which is set, dollar set, and you pass on the updated information that whatever you want to update. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and work on with that. So let's go ahead and this is again going to be same helper method. This one is going to be update one record. Now again, there are methods available for updating many records as well. Uh, currently that is not our use case. So we are not going to be talking too much on that part. Okay, let's go ahead and say that this is going to be a function and let's call this one as update one movie. And how this is going to work, you're going to pass me a movie ID. And this movie ID will be of type string. Usually the data that comes up is in the string format and that's what we are going to have. Now the first thing that we have to worry about is how can I convert this movie ID into something that MongoDB understand? The thing that MongoDB understand is actually an ID which internally is in the form of underscore ID. So we need to grab that first. Now luckily for us, we, we talked about already this primitive so as soon as you bring us this primitive, it has a lot of methods to work on with. One of the method is object ID from hex. So if you go ahead and look for this object ID from hex, uh, it actually is named that object ID from hex, but it actually converts string into the object ID, which is acceptable by the MongoDB. By the term valid object ID, that's exactly what they say. So all you got to do is pass on this movie ID up here and that's it, it's going to convert that. Now during the conversion, it's going to give you an ID and probably an error as well. And again, we are expecting that the hopefully the error is not going to come in. Uh, you can proceed based on this error as well, of course. Now let's move on. Now we have an ID. Now we have to proceed with the two things. First is this ID will be used to run through all the methods. Now we don't need to loop through the values update one. Uh, this there is a method in the MongoDB which actually go ahead and finds the one based on the ID and we have to just provide the value. So that is really nice. So what we got to do is first on we have to provide a filter and how we're going to provide the filter. Now this is where things becomes interesting. Remember I talked to you that everything inside the MongoDB is not JSON. Technically it is BSON. And yes, they look exactly the same. And in fact, if you look at the code itself, they exactly look the same. But BSON actually provides you more things like object ID. These all things are provided uh, thanks to the BSON. Now here we are going to go ahead and say uh, just one letter. There is a letter M and there is a letter D as well. So which one would you like to use? Now again, this is a little bit confusing. I worked a little bit onto that to see that how it is going on. And I went uh, too much detail and in depth onto the MongoDB blogs as well. And still there was no clear cut uh, instruction that which one should I use? They're using both on the go. And thanks to the help uh, from the Stack Overflow, they always come to rescue. Uh, they clearly mentioned up here that which one should I use? Uh, we can definitely use both bson.m and bson.d. The only difference is if I go ahead and scroll a little bit is uh, somewhere up here. So bson.m uh, is used if you want to have a shorter and the clearer result. And if you are not worried too much about the upper cases and lower cases, again, you can go ahead and read a little bit on uh, bson.m versus bson.d. Uh, luckily, I found this article and this proves that I'm not the only one who got confused in that. It's, it's really one. So again, we use both of them. And again, uh, this is a clear cut example. This is what you should be doing, what you should know. Majority of the cases, we will be using uh, bson.m, uh, but bson.d also have its own values when you want ordered element up here. You got the idea. So let's move on. We're going to say uh, we'll be using bson.m and this is where you provide all your query parameters. So in my case, I told you that this is not ID in terms of MongoDB world. It is actually underscore ID. So we are always looking for the underscore ID. So this is my filter. This is going to be my filter that, hey, uh, go ahead and use this one to go ahead and grab an ID uh, filter for you. Now, next up, we have to provide the update information that how we are going to go ahead and update this one. For this also, we are going to use the same bson.m. There we go. Now, in this case, we have to first provide a flag, which is a dollar set. In case you have worked with the MongoDB or have seen my series up there, you are quite familiar with that. 
Okay, the next thing that, what do you want to set further values? And this also comes up uh, like this. So this is going to be bson.m and this is where we pass on. If we just go ahead and directly pass on bson.m and all these values, the values will be uh, always being inserted. We don't want to insert that, all these values, we want to update those values. So right now we're going to say that I have a property watched, which is coming up from this models watched, all lowercase, and all you gotta do is turn this flag into true. And remember, we are not checking that whether this flag is previously true or not, we are always turning this flag into true, so that's what it is. Okay, so quite a little bit more stuff, and yes, I do agree that bson.m and this is a little bit of a new syntax, but this is a repetitive syntax, so you don't have to worry too much on that part. Now let's go ahead and work on with that. Now all we gotta do is uh, head up to our collection, use the property which is update one, and we have update by ID as well, by the way. Update one, it requires a couple of properties or a couple of values that you have to pass on. Of course, you might have guessed that already. The first one is context.background. The second one is filter, based on which it can filter the values, and finally an update. There we go. Nice and easy. Once this is all being done, obviously this might give you a result or might give you an error, and you have to handle both of them. Notice here we haven't handled this error up here. You should be handling that in theory, uh, but again, I guess you can go ahead and do that. Okay, let's proceed with caution, and we are gonna say if error is not equals to nil, then obviously this is a problem. Did I, mi did I miss something up here? Yeah, an extra L, there we go. Okay, so this is going to say that if that is the case, go ahead and log dot fatal and say error. And if that is not the case, let's go ahead and just provide. Now this result actually gives you a value that how many values are being updated. Uh, obviously in the case of update one, we are expecting that only one value is getting updated based on that every input that we are giving is going to get a unique ID, but still I just want to go ahead and print this out. So we're gonna go ahead and say modi modified count, and that is going to be given to us by this result and it has matched count, modified count, upserted count, I have never seen that, uh, but what we had inserted in this one is a modified count, so there we go. That's all what I want to do in this one. Okay, so this is the basics of how we update the record. In case you want to read a little bit more about it, uh, go ahead and explore a little bit on the bson.m, which is given to us by that. And also you can read a little bit more about the primitive, but that's pretty much it. This is a very repetitive syntax. And no matter what kind of update you'll be doing in the MongoDB, you'll be always be using either bson.m or bson.d. That's it pretty much for this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.